First thing on Monday morning, it is GCSE Chemistry Paper 1, and this is your comprehensive guide to revising for that paper. We're going to go through some of the most common mistakes that students make, topic areas that consistently get incorrect responses based on the examined reports for AQA, OCR, and LXL. We're also going to go through some of the predicted topic areas. Now, these are going to be based on what is frequently tested across all the recent past papers and things that make up a big proportion of the specification that perhaps haven't been tested all that much. So we're going to go through those. We're also going to go through how you can be answering the different styles of questions in your chemistry exam to make sure you are maximizing the amount of marks that you are able to get all that being said, let's get started. Chemistry is a technical subject. You need to know the details if you want to be picking up the marks. So that makes it really important that you are focusing in your revision, not just on getting a broad understanding of topics, but also actually getting to grips with the individual specification points. And this is different to how you might be revising for a subject that is more similar to history or English, for example. You can't really be utilizing the same techniques. So I'm gonna start by taking you through a plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday, unless you're watching this on Sunday, in which case tomorrow is the day of the exam but you can still be doing this with whatever amount of time you have left on Sunday evening and Monday morning but providing that you're watching this on the Saturday then this is what you are going to do to plan out your revision date tomorrow. In the morning the first thing that you're going to do is a timed past paper. Hopefully you've got one saved that you can be using if not just do one that you've done quite a considerable time ago so it's not very fresh in your mind whatsoever. So you're going to do that under timed conditions, making sure no distractions, no notes, and doing it as you would in the exam. You're immediately going to go through that paper. Now, before you look at the mark scheme, I want you to look at the examiner's report. Why do I say this? Because a lot of people, when I say, oh, look at the examiner's report, will sort of glance over it, won't really take it into account. If you look at it before the mark scheme, you're going to have more energy, more effort, more focus on that examiner's report because I really want you to get into your head that those reports basically tell you this is what you need to be doing. So you're going to read that first, then you're going to go through and mark your questions. You'll probably, having read it, already have a good idea of what you got correct and what you got incorrect. And for all of those questions that you got incorrect, I want you to log down why that mistake was made on a separate sheet of paper. And once you've done that for all of the questions that you got incorrect, I then want you to go back and redo those incorrect questions fully without looking at the mark scheme, but just obviously go back and check that your second time around, you did get it right. If you were get, still getting something wrong that second time around, that shows you that you really need to go back and review whatever topic that particular question was on because you cannot be having that. Then in the afternoon, what I want you to do is I'm about to take you through a bunch of common mistakes. And as I'm doing that, you'll probably think, oh, do you know what? I haven't revised this area as much or, oh, I don't think I know that particular area. Let me look at it. Once you've identified those areas, in your afternoon, you're going to begin with information. The best way I find to do this for chemistry is to watch a video because there are just so many videos out there. You can find them, everything from free science lessons to Seneca to Cognito, everywhere has useful explainer videos. So you're gonna watch one of the videos and then you're going to find some practice questions that relate to that specific topic. So you watch the video, do the practice questions. Again, practice questions can be found, Physics and Maths Tutor, Cognito, similar, similar websites like that. But making sure that when you're going through these practice questions, you answer one question and then you immediately mark it. You answer the next and then you immediately mark it. You're doing this to make sure you don't keep repeating the same mistake over and over in the question. And in the evening, I would be testing yourself on some key definitions and key formulae that you need to remember. The best way to do this is if you already have pre-prepared flashcards, then do go through those. If you don't, you can find pre-made sets. If you look on places like Quizlet and you just type in GCSE Paper 1 definitions and you'll get flashcard sets that you can go through. In doing this, particularly if it's not your own set, you might come across ones that you are, you've are you never come across before that you're unfamiliar with. Don't let that you know, put you off your course because sometimes people just add in extra things that perhaps was in one exam question that they didn't understand, so they added it into their Quizlet set. So don't pay too much heed to that. But obviously if it's fundamental things that you have seen before and you're getting incorrect, well then it's a good job you're reviewing it the night before when you're going to be able to store it, sleep on it and remember it in the morning. All right, moving on to thinking about those topic areas that students consistently get incorrect in the exam. So I've been through the examiner's reports, broken it down topic by topic. We are going to be starting with the first topic, which is atomic structure and the periodic table. Now, common mistakes that examiners consistently point out with this are confusing the atomic number and the mass number, remember which is which, and forgetting that the group number is the number of outer electrons. Now, these are two sort of very small areas of the specification, but they often underpin the first section of a much longer question. So if you get it incorrect, 
you're going to be repeating that same mistake over and over in the question, if that makes sense, which can severely cap your mark. So make sure you know those things, you're revising subatomic particles, isotopes, relative atomic mass, you know your electronic configuration, and you also know trends in the periodic table. Also on that is there's often a little bit of a question on Mendeleev's decision to lay out the periodic table in the way that he did make sure you are able to explain that. If you're finding that difficult, just look it up. There are past paper questions on that and just sort of memorize what the mark scheme tells you to do. Moving on to the next topic, bonding structure properties of matter. It is super, super important that you fully understand the differences between ionic, covalent, and metallic bonding, that when you are drawing dot cross diagrams, they are really super clear because if you're making scribbles and crossing things out, that looks like a cross in the dot cross diagram. So you need to practice that, make sure that they are okay. If you do one in the exam, you realize that is incorrect, put a line through the entire thing and draw it again. You just don't want to be leaving anything up to chance in that regard. Also be really specific in the types of wording that you do. So one thing that examiner's reports consistently point out is that students will say molecules instead of giant lattice for ionic structures. And it's things like that, that you'll think you answered it correctly, but because you didn't use the key terminology, you won't be picking up the marks. Now for quantitative chemistry, formulae is super important. You need to be knowing your moles equals mass divided by MR equation. That is going to indefinitely come up. And as you're answering calculations, always show every single step of your working. This is the same for maths and it applies in chemistry. You're only going to get error carried forward if you show every single step. So write it all down and that will, you know, show the examiner that actually perhaps you were halfway there. But if you just put the answer, then you wouldn't have got any marks. So that is really super important. You also, within this topic, should really understand limiting reagents. That comes up all of the time. And I remember I really struggled with that, but you can find very, very good explainer videos online. They don't even have to be, with, with topics like this, they don't have to necessarily be just for GCSE chemistry. Sometimes getting one that is slightly more advanced can just help you understand it because it gives you a little bit more of that underlying logic that then helps that concept stick in your brain. Now for chemical changes, there is quite the list um, that examiners have consistently reported students are getting wrong. So we've got not recording the reactivity series correctly. If you need to use little new, new I can never say this word, mnemonics, then <laughs> make sure you're using that. But otherwise just do try and remember this because this is going to come up. If it's the kind of thing that you think, oh, I'm just going to forget. Look at it literally right before you go into the exam, remember it and then write it down on your exam paper as soon as you can so that if you do need to refer to it, you've got it right there. Also in this electrolysis, students will always get the products at the different electrodes wrong. Make sure you know your anode, your cathode, and you know the different products that are going to be made at each of them. You're not getting it confused. And also, students consistently have confusion between displacement reactions and reactions with acid. So go back, take a look at that. Lastly, energy changes. Fundamentally, remember exothermic reactions give out heat, endothermic reactions take heat in, and that underpins a lot of things, but too many students obviously get that the wrong way around, which is really easily done, but you've just got to remember that. And similarly with this, make sure you know your energy profile diagrams with labels and that you know how to do bond energy calculations because they're quite likely to come up. Speaking of things that are likely to come up, I am now going to take you through some predicted topics. Now, disclaimer to this, this is just from my own looking at past papers, looking at examiner's reports, and it's essentially based on topics that have come up a lot um, and make up a big part of the specification, so are likely to come up again, and topics that make up a big part of the specification but haven't come up enough relative to that, or topic areas that in the examiner's reports, the examiners were like, students, you know, really answer this quite poorly, so this will be tested again. Because they say that explicitly, so this will be tested again in certain examiner's reports. All that being said, let me go through stuff. Okay, so it's very, very likely that bonding and structure is going to come up. It's a core topic, appears every year, diagrams. Diagrams, diagrams, diagrams. No, your bonding and structure diagrams. That is very likely to come up. Second thing is the reactivity series and displacement. This has been really underassessed in recent papers and it is quite a big part of the specification. So I would make sure you go away, you make sure you know your reactivity series and you make sure you know the different sort of reactions that relate to it and when sort of displacement occurs. Something that is likely to come up is electrolysis. It normally seems to sort of alternate between um, looking at electrolysis and looking at um, redox or reactivity. And those two have been assessed quite a lot, but electrolysis hasn't. So, Take a look, make sure you know your products, 
because that is most likely what's going to be tested in that regard. And similarly likely is salt preparation. So in the previous times that it's been tested, examiners have said that it was answered really quite poorly. So that makes it quite likely that they're going to want to retest it. So make sure you know the sort of preparation mechanisms for different salts. It's also very likely, you know, calculations, they are going to come up. Quantitative chemistry, moles, yield, no matter how much you dislike it, it is going to come up. Please do yourself a favor and take a look over it tomorrow. Similarly, uh, endo and exothermic reactions and bond energy. So these have been missed for some exam boards over the past couple of years and are really likely to return. They are so fundamental to the specification to that topic area. So again, exo, endothermic reactions, make sure you know the difference and make sure you can do bond energy calculations um, because those particularly have not come up very much. And Possibly, this is just, basically, it comes up every year, atomic structure and knowing what isotopes are and how isotopes differ between each other and between it being like separate elements. That is a really common sort of comparison question. All right, those are my predictions. Now for the exam itself, how are you going to be answering the different styles of question? You can get one mark questions. These should basically take no time at all. They're generally multiple choice. If you're struggling to get the answer, eliminate anything that you think is definitely wrong and take a look what is going to be the most likely answer. If you are genuinely really, really struggling, you've been on it for over two minutes, pick an answer, move on, it's one mark. For short answer questions that are one or two marks, you get a mark per point. Use really specific terminology and make sure you're not waffling, just get to the point. If you over waffle, essentially the way that the mark scheme works is if you say something that is incorrect, that negates something that is correct. So if you try and put lots and lots and lots of, lots of information in there in the hope that at least one thing will be correct, you're more than likely to put something incorrect in there that then prevents you from actually getting the marks. For these structured questions of the three to four marks, you essentially want to be following a PEE structure, point, evidence, explain. Now, it can be really weird to hear that outside the context of English or history or even an essay. So what do I mean by that? Well, I've got like an exemplar response that they had in one of the examiner's reports, what one of these point, evidence, explain sentences looks like. Ionic bonding occurs because electrons are transferred from metal atoms to non-metal atoms, creating oppositely charged ions that attract each other. So you see how that is three distinct points in the same phrase? That is the way that these PE answers are going to work for those three to four mark questions. Back to calculations, obviously, show you're working, put as much down as you can. Um, and if you're using formulae, write out the formulae first before you then substitute in the values so that they know that you know what the formula is. Make sure with these calculation questions, you're also including units in your answer. Now, let's move on the most dreaded questions, the extended six markers. Now, they essentially have got guides that they will tell you to do. So what the examiners want you to do is start with an introduction where you define the concept, you define the key terms that are given to you in that STEM question. Then you move on to an explanation where you're using two to three scientific ideas, utilizing keywords and basically following that point, evidence, explain structure of your sentences or you know, use it across multiple sentences. And then you need to link back so you cannot get into that top band if you're not linking back and writing a sentence to interpret your answer in the context of a question. That can feel quite difficult, but essentially what you're doing is just relating things back. So if we go back to this idea of ionic bonding, this was the sort of example that they were running with in the examiner's report. The way that you would use this structure is you would define ionic bonding. You would say that electrons are transferred from the sodium to the chloride. The question, sorry, was describe how ionic bonding works in sodium chloride. Defining ionic bonding, saying where the electrons are transferred, talking about full outer shells, saying that oppositely charged ions attract, and then your sort of link back is saying that the giant lattice is formed, which is the sodium chloride. With graphs and diagrams, label the axes, check units, make sure that if you're asked to interpret it, you're saying whether it's increasing or decreasing, and sort of how. Is it linear? Is it non-linear? Is it a quadratic? And if you can also add in a sentence sort of explaining what is the interpretation of this therefore, like if it is, you know, an exponential increase, what is the actual implication of that related to what is on the two axes? Bonus, these are the sort of five formulas that you want to memorize. It is moles is mass over MR, concentration is moles divided by volume, percentage yield is actual yield minus uh, divided by theoretical yield times 100. Um, atom economy is the MR of the desired, over the MR of the total products times 100, and then energy change, bonds broken minus bonds made. That is all my advice for your chemistry GCSE paper one. I really hope it goes well. Good luck. 
You've got a whole day to revise tomorrow and then you're going to walk into your exam on Monday morning and you're going to smash it because you will have just revised some of the most important topics that are most likely to come up on this paper that you know that you've been struggling with. As ever, I'll see you in the next video and if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments.